Hey everybody, welcome back to the Print 3D channel. Recently, GTEC sent over the A30 3D printer for us to test and review on the channel. And we've had it for a couple of weeks, and as you can see, I printed out quite a lot of stuff. And I want to share my first impressions and my honest opinion with you guys, so stick around. A huge thanks to the following people for supporting the channel. Hey everybody, welcome back, and thank you for joining me here on the Print 3D channel. Recently, Jimmy Shaw from Jimmy Shaw's Tidbits connected myself and Chris Russell from the Practical Printing channel with a representative from GTEC for a 3D printer. That 3D printer was the A30. The three of us, after a couple of months, finally received our printers, and we've been printing on them for the last couple of weeks. And if you follow us on social media, you can see that we've been getting out some pretty decent prints. And I've really gotten a chance to print out a lot of stuff, as you can see, and I want to share my first impression and my honest opinion of the A30 3D printer. But before we go any further, a little disclaimer. This printer was sent to the channel for free for review. No money has changed hands whatsoever for our review or our opinion of this 3D printer. The only benefit is we do get to keep the 3D printer. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about the printer. The GTEC A30 3D printer features a 320 by 320 by 420 millimeter build area. It also has a heated bed with a piece of tempered glass on there, which they call the super plate. On that piece of tempered glass is a really cool coating that as long as you keep it clean, you should have really good bed adhesion. The printer also features an all metal hot end and is equipped with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. It also has a really nice cooling fan and a hot end fan. The filament is driven by a Bowden system that's actually mounted on the Z-axis as it moves up. And speaking of the Z-axis, this has dual Z-axis threaded rods, which is a huge bonus in this price point for a printer. It also has a USB and micro SD card reader, so it's real easy to connect to this printer to get your prints going. The printer also features a full color touchscreen, which is a huge bonus in this price point. And it's a really nice system too. It is open source, and it is a really cool set of firmware that is proprietary to this type of printer. And the touchscreen itself is super interactive. As I was moving through the menus, it was really easy to get to all the different functions that I wanted to get to, including moving the bed, changing the temperature, and while the print is running, you can actually adjust a lot of the settings, except for the Z height, which would be a huge bonus, through the touchscreen itself. There are a couple of other features built into the A30 3D printer as it's shipped. One of them is a filament runout sensor, and I did test this feature, and it works perfectly. Basically what happens, there's a small sensor right next to the Bowden system that you feed your filament through, and it's mounted on a bit of a bearing so it can move around easily with your filament roll no matter how far down or where you have a position next to your printer. And once the filament runs out, you're prompted on the LCD screen and it lets you know that the filament has a problem and you need to reload it. The next procedure will take a couple of minutes because it is a Bowden system and you do have to back the filament all the way out as much as you can, of course, and then remove it and feed in new filament before you resume printing. And it's an excellent feature, especially if you're using small sample rolls or if you're at the end of a roll or if you're doing a long print and you're worried about the filament running out. It will beep kind of loud and you will be able to hear it. And once you start the print up again, it actually printed out perfectly after that. One of the other built-in features is the power outage resume feature. Now this basically is, is that when you shut the printer off and turn it back on, you can go to the status screen and resume the print. Now, I found if you unplug the printer on the back of the printer, the print head stays where it was. It doesn't move, it doesn't raise. Now, I didn't try any other ways to do any kind of power outage by maybe flipping the power on the power strip or maybe just toggling the power switch itself. Because I did notice if you do power down the printer while it's running, it does take a second to shut down, so maybe it's checking to make sure that there isn't a print running. Now, I didn't test that feature in that particular way, but what I found was is the hot end stayed right on the model, and once you got it all warmed up after you resumed printing again, it did blob up a huge piece on the print, which I thought was no good. So there is some work that needs to be done with the power outage resume feature, but it is available on the GTEC A30 3D printer. Loading up the filament and running the printer is really easy too. And if you watched my unboxing video, the assembly of the printer is actually really easy. If you're a PC user, there's also an application that you can use called EasyPrint 3D, which you can also use to update your firmware. I'm sure there's other ways to update your firmware using a Mac, I just haven't done it yet. I'm using the printer as shipped out of the box. 
There are also some additional options you can add to the printer when you purchase it. There's a bed leveling sensor, and there's also a Wi-Fi module. These printers shipped as is without those features. Bed leveling on the printer is actually pretty easy. It's bed leveling assisted through the touchscreen, and the procedure actually takes about two, three minutes, and you should have a perfectly level bed when you're ready to print. And again, this is open source firmware, so you should be able to modify this firmware and set it up to your liking. And let's talk about how the printer is shipped to you. It's actually shipped in a really cool case. And again, if you see my unboxing video, you can see how easy it is to put the printer together. Essentially, there's three parts. You have the gantry with your extruder and your x-axis, and your z-axis going up with your dual lead screws and dual z-axis motors set up. You also have your y plate set up, and you have your control box. You just connect a couple of wires, connect your, uh, your gantry to your build plate system, and you're actually ready to go. Once the printer was fully assembled, it was time to start printing. As with any brand new printer on the market, you might have some difficulty finding a slicing software to slice your models to send it if you're not using the EasyPrint 3D app. I'm a Mac user, so I like to use either Simplify 3D or Cura. While browsing through the Facebook group for GTech, they did have an A30 profile for Cura, which I tested and I really wasn't happy with. I did mess around a little bit with Simplify 3D and tried to develop a profile, but I got a little frustrated with that. Then my good friend Jimmy Shaw over at Jimmy Shaw's Tidbits posted a video on how you can build a Cura profile for the A30 GTEC printer, and I'll link that right here. I followed his directions and I was printing right away, and the prints started turning out perfectly. I didn't have any problems whatsoever. I had a really great Cura profile, and that's when I started printing out as many things as I could with the GTEC A30 3D printer. But before we started doing any of the printing, we had to do the bed leveling procedure. Now this printer came as shipped without that option, which is the bed level sensor, but there is a manual bed leveling system that you can follow through the touchscreen, which actually takes only a couple of minutes to do, and it's a super easy procedure. Basically, it takes you through each of the, the four corners of the build plate and allows you to adjust the screw underneath the build plate so you can make it perfectly level by uh, taking a piece of paper and running it underneath the nozzle until it slightly grabs in each corner. I repeat the procedure at least twice before I do any kind of printing, and I found that gives me a perfectly level build plate. With the bed totally level, it was time to start printing, and I wanted to print out a lot of stuff to show you guys. The first thing I started printing out was some of my basic models, which include the Benchy, my Maker Coin, a Cali Cat, and a couple other models I'm super familiar with, because I know what they're gonna look like. And after a little while, I did notice a little issue spring up on the printer. Now, when the printer shipped to me, there was a screw and bearing that was loose underneath the print bed, and I did have to remove the um, build plate off the printer and remount everything up. And when I was doing that, I noticed something that I wanted to change to ensure that I was gonna have even bed leveling along the whole build plate. In the back corner where the wires are for the heated build plate, there's a plastic retainer clip that is actually connected into the screw and, or the spring and screw mechanism that's part of the bed leveling, which actually compresses the spring a little bit more in that corner. In the front right corner, I noticed that I couldn't raise the print bed anymore at a certain point where the screw would just start to spin and I still needed to raise it a little more. So what I did is I took the build plate off again and I put in two small washers that were included with the spare parts kit that came with the printer, which is a nice addition because there was a lot of spare parts. So I put two washers in all the corners that didn't have the plastic clip, and then I assembled everything back together, and I noticed my print quality, uh, my print quality increased at that point, so I knew that was a good solution, and that's a really good suggestion to you guys over at GTEC to put on the printer. Notice that the plastic clip compresses the spring a little bit differently in the back left corner, so you might want to add some more washers to the other three corners to even out the compression so you don't have any kind of bowing going on because there is a little bit more pressure on one spring than the other. Other than that, the bed leveling procedure was easy and I was ready to start printing again, so I started printing out some really big prints. So after installing the three washers in the corners and re-leveling the bed, it was time to start printing. And I noticed that the print quality increased dramatically. The first thing I printed out was a giant maker coin because I want to start utilizing the large print bed. And then after that, I printed out a large vase, and that's the red vase that you see behind me. And that turned out perfectly. I did want to run a couple of tests because this has a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and a heated bed. So I did put some PET G in and I ran a couple of tests with that. And the first thing I printed out was this cool little Benchy and it has kind of a cool kryptonite green to it. 
And the first thing that came to mind was I should probably print out the Green Lantern power ring. And I did. And it turns out awesome. And it's the perfect size for my finger. And I really wanted to print something even smaller after that. So I went over onto Thingiverse and I found a little piece for tabletop gaming. I believe this is the Dwarf Clan Guard. And it is the tiniest 18 millimeter print I have ever printed on any printer. And it looks amazing with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle and the heated bed, making sure that this little tiny footprint stayed snug on that print surface. This guy printed out perfectly. I was super happy with the results. I did some tolerance testing too. I did print out an XYZ cube and it turned out perfectly. It measures really, really nice. And I'll show you a little footage of everything that I'm doing as far as testing goes as we're speaking here. So you'll probably see some pop-ups come as I talk. But the XYZ cube turned out perfectly. I wanted to test some more tolerances on it and make sure that this 0.4 millimeter nozzle and the printer could handle printing out delicate parts or built-in hinges. So over on my mini factory, I found this cool posable figure and it has a ton of little built-in joints and bridges and all kinds of stuff in it because it's posable. And even though there is some crackling going on from some of the bridging, all the other, all the other joints turned out perfect. I didn't have to break anything loose. It's perfectly posable and it's a really cool little toy. And it really showed that the tolerances of the GTEC A30 3D printer were pretty good and I was able to print out something like this. And that pretty much proved to me that the tolerances on the GTEC A30 printer were pretty much spot on and I could print pretty much anything I wanted on this printer. So with that slight modification of adding the two washers to each of the three corners of the print bed, which actually came with the printer, the print quality on this printer is actually really, really good. I'm super happy with all the results of it. I really can't wait to start printing more things with it. So to summarize, the GTEC A30 3D printer is actually a really nice printer. The printer that I got had one minor problem as shipped, but it was easy to fix. And of course, I did make one slight modification to the printer, and that was just to increase my bed leveling abilities. Other than that, the printer as shipped is really nice. I really love having that touch screen. It's super interactive. There are a lot of settings that you can get to during the print, which is really nice. And you're able to the control and change all the settings that you need to do for the printer right there on the LCD screen. One of the other benefits of this printer is the built-in runout sensor, which I think is a huge bonus. And of course, that power outage resume function just needs a little bit more polish, but it's definitely worth using. Two of the other features that weren't included with the printer would be the bed leveling sensor and the optional Wi-Fi, which I'm definitely going to get because I think those would benefit the printer greatly. But other than that, the printer is shipped is working perfectly. All the print quality is really nice. There's no problems whatsoever. After polishing my profile in Cura with a little help from Jimmy Shaw and the community over on Facebook, I was able to get out some really great prints and I'm super happy with the GTEC A30 3D printer. And again, this is open source firmware, so you should be able to modify this printer in any way you want and really add a lot of modifications to it should you need to do so. And the price point for this printer currently is $429 on GTEC's website. I don't know what the prices are on any of the other websites, I'm only using the GTEC's price. If you want to add the optional bed leveling sensor and Wi-Fi module, it brings you up to $479. So with a large build volume, a built-in runout sensor, a nice heated bed with a really cool surface to print on, I think the GTEC A30 3D printer is the perfect printer at this price point. So my first impression and honest opinion of the GTEC A30 3D printer is that at this price point, $429 without the additional features, you're getting a great value and an awesome 3D printer, and I highly recommend it. There's also a link down in the description. It's a non-affiliate link. Definitely check it out. Well, that about wraps it up for my first impressions and honest opinion of the GTEC A30 3D printer. Again, we were not paid in any way for our opinion or the review of this printer. The only benefit is we do get to keep the printer and I'm definitely going to use it. I really want to give a huge thank you to GTEC for sending us the A30 3D printer for us to unbox and review on the channel. And a huge shout out to Jimmy Shaw from Jimmy Shaw's Tidbits for connecting myself and Chris Russell from the Practical Printing channel so we could have the new A30 3D printer for us to test and review on our channels. If you found this video interesting and informative, check out the affiliate links that are down in the description. And don't forget that Patreon page. Your support really helps the channel. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment, like, and share those videos, and I'll talk to you guys soon.